Uh, aloha, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Anna Page. I am the Director of Programming at the Hawaii International Film Festival, and I'd like to welcome you to the 40th Annual Hawaii International Film Festival presented by Holly Kalani. And the, today's discussion with Valerie Castillo-Martinez, who is the writer and producer of Death of Nintendo. We're very, very excited to have Valerie with us today. Um, and also, I, before we get started, I'm just going to go over some housekeeping bits. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank all of our sponsors um, at the festival. They really helped make HIF happen. And in particular, I would like to thank the Vilcek Foundation. Uh, the Vilcek Foundation support our New American Perspectives program of which Death of Nintendo is a part of this year. And we're very grateful um, for the support of the Vilcek Foundation. Last but not least, uh, I do want to remind everyone that this film is nominated for a Hip Audience Award. So we are still doing voting this year. So if you want to vote, just go to Hawaii News Now slash HIF and you can vote online for your favorite film. So please definitely do that if you get a chance. So, uh, without further ado, I would like to first introduce Elizabeth Boylan from the Vilcek Foundation to speak a little bit more about the Foundation and the New American Perspectives Program. Thanks, Anna. Uh, we're so thrilled to be able to present the New American Perspectives Program this year as part of HIF 40. Uh, the Vilcek Foundation was established in 2000 by Jan and Marza Vilcek, both immigrants from former Czechoslovakia, to help honor and celebrate the many contributions immigrants make to arts, culture, and to society in the United States. Since 2007, we've partnered with HIF to present a program that highlights and shares the work of immigrant filmmakers, artists, and creators with the festival's audiences. It's really special for us to be able to share a program like New American Perspectives in Hawaii, a place and a state that has so profoundly been shaped by human migration and immigration. We're delighted to work with Valerie Castillo-Martinez and share her film, Death of Nintendo, as part of the New American Perspectives program this year. As both screenwriter of the film and one of the film's producers, Valerie contributed insight both to the creative and practical aspects of the film's development and production. And so we're particularly excited to hear from her on these today. With all the challenges that 2020 has presented us, we're so grateful to immerse ourselves in films like Death and Nintendo that allow us to reflect on the universal experiences of youth and coming of age. So without further ado, I send it back to you, Anna. Thank you so much, Liz. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna open it up um, for some questions for Valerie and talk a little bit more about the film um, and about uh, her role in the process and her career. Um, so Valerie, again, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. I know that as a screenwriter, this is your first feature length um, film project, which is you know, really, really exciting. So I wanted to um, find out a little bit more if you could tell us about the development of the story and the script for the film. I know there were sort of some influences or experiences uh, from your youth growing up in the Philippines. Sure, thank you, Anna. Um, yeah, so I've always written, you know, for as long as I can remember and loved storytelling and loved the, all the stories that I was told growing up, um, from, you know, from my mom or my grandmother and my, uh, even my nannies who tell me more of the kind of the folklore from the regions in the Philippines. And so, I didn't really know that I could merge, you know, just the, the journal and creative writing. And then that, you know, when I discovered movies at, also at a younger age, um, yeah, I, I didn't know that I could translate that into screenwriting. Um, and so the death of Nintendo uh, started as a school project um, when I was in grad school. So, you know, life just kind of got in the way and, you know, I migrated to the U.S. and I was in the military and um, while just figuring all of that stuff out, I kind of um, went back into my memories of, of, you know, missing the Philippines and, you know, kind of thinking about the 90s and how different it's, it's all um, 
have become um, fast forward to 2020. I mean, 2020 alone is, uh, yeah, it's different um, in itself. Um, so yeah, so it just started out as a screenwriting exercise for grad school. And then the easiest um, place for me to draw um, from would be my childhood and my my experiences, my own experiences, because that's the most authentic thing that you can write. And so I was just faced with the question of how much do you want to expose? How much do you want to fictionalize? And how much do you want to embellish? Um, so yeah, so the writing process was well, kind of what's its, its own coming of age in a way, because I learned to reveal more of myself and be more vulnerable. And I think yeah, the more vulnerable you are, the more courageous you could be as a person um, because you, you're you open to exposing the complexity and, and you know, even the flaws of, of, of your life and um, while reflecting, well, trying to um, reflect the complexity of, of society and, and the world around you. Um, so, yeah, so it was... The writing experience was really, really eye-opening for me. Um, and I had, you know, I had my peers at Columbia that helped support me with notes and things like that. And then I have my close kind of uh, peers who, you know, wanted to to, to help me um, um, with the vision of it. And then I had Raya um, at, um, kind of at the end because he's directing it to also... Um, make it his own and also, you know, um, direct it to the best of his ability because of, of if he, if he truly connects to the story, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's going to be more effective for him, um, as a piece to direct. Yeah. With their, with, the, um, that, I, you know, it's sort of, um, an unfolding or an, Mm, the, the development of the, the project, because it was lengthy and in so many layers and stages, uh, it feels almost like um, you, you uh, got to a deeper layer or a deeper um, sense of authenticity as, as the project uh, was in development in your process writing. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I mean, we, so we were trying to do so many things. I mean, I was trying to because it was my first feature, I just had idea after idea, you know, we were being, we were watching films, you know, every, every day. And so, you know, not only are you influenced by the things that you watch and, and read, um, but I also, you know, I also wanted to pay homage to some of my favorite like 90s films. And, um, and of course there's, there's the difference in genre, like there's like an homage to some horror, there's, you know, some, some romance and some comedy. Um, so we were, <laughs> it was a lot and I am, yes, I'm very aware of that. Um, but in terms of the Filipino themes, um, it was also something that I wanted to showcase because we had all these kind of traditions and, and cultural, um, things that were very specific to that place and, and even that time. Mm -hmm. um, so I tried to sprinkle as much of that and, you know, as uh, you know, you'll see that throughout the movie, but I just wanted to, um, yeah, have the friendship of the four friends kind of be the center, center of it. Um, and then for me, just coming out as, you know, the girl, who's one of the boys that came out in the end, because very much like in the writing process, I thought it was just going to be about fun and games when I was writing the script. And then when I discovering that, Oh, it's actually much deeper about this girl who's trying to come into her own self. That that's why it led to, to that end, you know? Um, so yeah, I think, I hope you like it. <laughs> That's how it came out for me. The process is very much what you see in the film. Yeah, no, no, I really, you know, I, I personally, and I, I know our audience as well, we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the film. And I felt that, I felt that um, 
that perfect sort of blend of uh, sort of some different genres in filmmaking with a lot of um, sense of authenticity or sense of, uh, you know, homage or, you know, reference to um, the time period and also uh, the Filipino culture um, during that time period. So that definitely, I think, reads across and it, it blends, I think, very perfectly in the film. So I think that was uh, successful. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, so, you know, in the process, um, also, you know, the, the main character's relationships with women, uh, you know, Paolo's relationship with women from his auntie um, to who comforts him, to his growing interest in his classmates and women is, in his community. The question is, is the film more about Paolo or about Chiara? Oh, that's a, I think I would... Whoever's watching it, because I have mixed um, responses from audience. So, like, if they were, you know, usually they're male. They're like, oh, like, I was that boy, Paolo and the gang, you know, like, I really identified with them. But if it's, you know, a female I'm speaking to, she, she yeah, it's more rooted in our perspective, you and me, and of like, oh, wow, like, that girl was me. I was a tomboy. I wasn't a popular girl. And, you know, I was, you know, I, I didn't know quite where I belong. And so I really identify with Mimo. And to me, like, that's great. Whoever you identify with in the film, that's why it, it's, it, you know, it's built a little bit to be multi-protagonist with hints of, you know, with highlights of, of what happens in the end for, for Paolo and Mimo in particular. Um, yeah, that's what you take away with you. And I'm happy, you know, if you take away at least one and not the two or three endings, and that's fine with me. I'm happy that you identify with at least one of them. Um, so I would, yeah, I would say it's maybe a double hander, um, maybe a handoff to Mima at the end and maybe it starts out with the boys and then they hand it off to Mima. Yeah. At the end, as it, tra it transitions. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, as, as a coming of age a film, you know, also it does, um, you know, also we were talking a little bit prior, it, they you know, captures a universality in the experience of coming of age, um, whether it's set in the 90s time period in the Philippines, there's a lot of elements of uh, the story that really capture sort of uh, universal aspect. So what aspects of adolescence do you think that you really um, put into the script that you felt, you know, were those sort of universal um, feelings or elements of coming of age? Um, well, I think the most, well, the one that's most apparent is Mimos um, trying to be one of the boys and aspiring to be, well, well, she thinks that they're, they're fun and they're cool because, you know, the boys get to do what they want. You know, they get to go wherever they want, play with, you know, and the banter is a little bit more carefree and maybe um, inhibited. Um, and, you know, in the Philippines, the girls are a little bit more protected and, you know, sheltered. Um, so, so Mimo really finds her own... Um, sense of belonging, just being carefree, running around, climbing trees, you know. Um, so, yeah. Um, she definitely belongs with the boys, but her, she wants, she realizes very quickly that it's not all fun and games. It's only, it can only last for so long. And when she starts, you know, um, hanging out with the girls, it's not quite right either. You know, they're also very much influenced by either material things or like, you know, some vanity, I don't know, whatever it is that uh, society <laughs> tells girls that they should be this way or, you know, dress this way or look this way. And that's not sitting so well for Mimo either. So it's just finding her place, finding that right balance. Um, and then in, in addition to that, she also um, is torn between um, her loyalty to her, like staying with her mom in the Philippines or, you know, exploring new worlds and giving her dad a chance and who's in the States. And um, so for me, I think that's the one that sticks out for me. 
Um, and the other themes for coming of age uh, would be the the heart, the, your first heartbreak. Basically, it's never easy. First of all, it's not not even like how do you even navigate um, knowing how to express yourself? And when you're feeling your your first feelings of infatuation for someone, it's unexplainable. Like it's a feeling everybody everybody will remember for the rest of their lives when they have their first crush or real you know real feelings that you just want to give to this person that you're enamored by this person and you want to give your being your you know um i guess that's the romantic in me and 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 mimo definitely didn't know quite know how to to show her to express her feelings to paulo but um she endured even when he was falling for someone else like she would still okay I'll help you I'll help you get the girl you know kind of that self-sacrifice um I think a lot of women can relate to that feeling um and and sorry even men and you know um so so it's that first first love that first heartbreak and and how just um painful it is uh, for the first time when you when you experience it for the first time so I think those two things um it's like universal fires you know I uh, yeah I mean I I, yeah. I I I think um tom tomboys of the of the world especially <laughs> during our youth um would also agree with that um and that universality of that experience of like especially when you come to that difficult age and yeah. you don't it, you know, in yeah, I, um, you know, and your body is developing, and you're like, oh, what do I? How do I dress now? What do I do with this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and maybe culture has changed a little bit since then. The kids, these kids who are growing up now, maybe it's easier, maybe it's harder. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, for sure, there's definitely like um, uh, uh a sense of, you know, gender is fluid and, you know, like you shouldn't conform to societal norms of the way how you should dress or act or behave, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's progress. <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. Mm -hmm. So I want to also touch base on, um, you know, just moving into the production um, aspects of the film. So, you know, you wrote the script, um, you know, gone through this, this long process um, to, you know, bring it to fruition. Um, you know, coming up on the back of that, you know, you are also a producer of the film. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, the experience of bringing the film from script to screen, um, especially in terms of um, funding the project or putting the project together um, in the US, a project that, you know, you're planning to shoot in the Philippines? Yeah. Sure. So I, um, what helped me was because it was, it started as a school project, but because I was a producing major, I had to develop all these materials for pitching it as well. And mm -hmm. so we ended up, you know, it was chosen as a case study for a producing class where a whole group of us um, planned the, you know, like the marketing and distribution and the financing plan together. So I felt like I had, um, even if it was just school and, you know, it's not like a for real project, later on it became um, a real project <laughs> because some of those ideas that we were um, working together towards were actual things that were actually, um, actionable <laughs> so so when I graduated I had you know I had a pretty solid budget I had a pretty solid plan um and the difficult part of it was of course the actual <laughs> the actual going to the companies and actually peddling of the of the the pitch deck and and meeting industry people that I've never met before um so I would say the it's it's organizations that really help um, filmmakers like me who are starting out to expose me to industry people. Mm -hmm. So I I was accepted to a fellowship called Project Involve again in LA and Film Independent, and I, that, I that's probably my first exposure. And then oh sorry in Colombia it, it won um, 
a screenwriting award um, at the screenwriting competition when I graduated. So that is like the prize for that is like meeting industry people again, both in New York and LA. And that's um, and then shortly after it uh, it went to uh, Tribeca Film Institute uh, Network, and then that's how I met my agent. And then my agent, you know, again, um, kind of distributed the pitch decks to other people. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that it would be successful from the bat because it is still a foreign language film. It is still, you know, the market views, this, views it as, you know, well, it's not English language, therefore we're not going to touch it. We're not gonna, we can't finance that. We don't know, you know, if that's even going to be a profitable film. So I, it wasn't much success, um, tangible, like financial success in raising money in the U.S., but it was definitely helpful to start to get to know the industry people that can, can kind of like support you later on. Um, and then because I also, I was continuing to do my producing work uh, with shorts with other collaborators that were somewhat successful. Um, that led to more, just more and more introductions to other people who can, you know, they might not help in one capacity, but they can help in another capacity. And so eventually that led me a short that I produced uh, got into Busan, and then that led me to another market where I met the the partners in the Philippines, um, who who ended up you know financing half of the film, and then the rest of it with you know grants and then you know just like honestly um, just like friends and family like were investing and and helping out and just really supporting. Um, so we piece piecemealed everything together and, and somehow we just like, okay, we, we can shoot with this. And yeah. And that's why you're watching something that like, we wish it, we, it could have been more like production value, but that's the best what we can do and what we would, what we've raised. And of course, like the, the collaborators, like my DP and my, you know, Ryan, my director and my editor, everyone is just doing it, you know, for love for out of, the goodness of their hearts and so I yeah it's kind of this scrappy um way of, of putting a film together um but yeah it was a process and I'm, gl I'm glad that you know um, um especially here in the new American perspectives that it's being recognized as you know uh, an American you know film as well so yeah, yeah definitely I think that um you know, first of all, the film um, looks uh, beautiful. I, 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 I wouldn't knock your production value. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, I think this really speaks to, I guess, for young um, uh, filmmakers or people who are coming out of film school, you know, the, um, the power and the importance of, you know, these sort of development programs and um, experiences and pro like, you know, that you can get involved with, you know, whether it be Film Independent or Sundance Labs or these types of programs that are out there um, that really help to help you network, help you yeah. um, to make those contacts in the industry um, to learn about, you know, how to bring the film to the screen and um, connecting you with folks that it may not have an immediate result, but then later on, um, you know, they, they'll have you in their mind. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something comes up. Um, and, uh, and I think that's just, you, you, that's just really, really crucial. So, um, yeah. but it's really amazing that it was, a uh, um, you were, it's a learning process, like as you were, as you were coming to completion and uh that's just it's really a really the result um is very is very impressive um so you know building on that um you know i i believe that you knew raya the, the director raya martin um before uh you made this film together can you talk a little bit about how that collaboration came together sure so raya and i grew up in the same neighborhood in the philippines and we attended the same elementary school and high school together. He's a year below me. So, you know, you, you know, he's directing his like class play and I'm directing my class play. So, you know, it's, it's super cool to, to think about it that way that we grew together. And then I migrated to the U S he stayed in the Philippines. He became Raya, the Raya that 
makes wonderful films. I was sidetracked for a little bit because I did the other life stuff with the military and, you know, marriage and all that stuff. Um, but eventually we reconnected. He invited me to his premiere um, in Cannes for a film called Independentia. Mm -hmm. And I was stationed in Germany with my husband. So, um, yeah, I went, loved it. Um, we made a little joke that we should work on something together later in life. Um, and sure enough, when the script was done, yeah, I immediately thought of him and I reached I reached out and he's yes. So that's kind of our little history. And, and working with him was really so much fun. It was, it just felt like we were thrown back to the nineties. Um, every day on set was just like full of laughter and, you know, and, and because Raya's energy is um, um, infectious, it's, it's light and uh, he loves to laugh. He loves to have fun. I, on the other hand, are more of a, you know, we need to focus. We need to, I'm worrying about the budget and um, like everyone's safety. And, um, and he just, we just kind of compliment each other really well. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really, really cool. It's um, because not only, I mean, I'm sure when he um, read your script, he probably could feel a lot of the identification because you went to school together. So it's the same yeah. environment, the same yeah. um, group of people. So he, uh, yeah, he probably resonated with that immediately. Um, that Was that something that drew him to the story or he just loved it? Yeah, the I, I think so. I think um, he's, um, he has some coming of age films as well, like shorts and, and whatnot. Um, that's really centered on, I, I'm not sure if he probably related to Paolo more, um, especially with Paolo's um, relationship to his nanny, mm -hmm. because he's very close to his nanny. Um, so I think if he had to pick like a, a area of, of the script that he really resonated with, it would be that relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, but he also liked uh, the fun, all the kind of playful things that he, we could, you know, do um, because the film does have a lot of, it goes in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, so maybe he thought it was a challenge to um, make something um, that's, you know, playing with a lot of these um, coming of age, you know, either, you know, tropes or you know or, or homage to the to the 90s films that we loved and we watched a lot of 90s films together just because we wanted to capture something that felt it felt um familiar yeah. um so yeah and it was a challenge for him too like with his body of work that's usually on the experimental side to do something also more narrative and just you know um um yeah, like a straightforward narrative. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it was there was something for for both of us to get our to get our to sink sink our teeth into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, you know, on you're talking about you know on set and during production, there's you, you complemented each other a mm -hmm. lot in your style and um, what you brought to the table. Mm -hmm. um, what was the the process like? Um, sort of collaboratively in terms of, you know, Raya bringing your script to life? Was there, um, was there a lot of like back and forth and consultation? Um, did he sort of take what you had and just, you know, really make it into his own? How did that process work with you? I mean, as far as the writing, it was really, he, you know, I told you that I had some, I had to like, I had some hesitation in exposing a lot of my personal stuff and, and he really gave me that comfort to, to bring it out. So he would prod me heavily on the script of why did she do this? And why did this character do this? Um, and not just Mima, but all the other boys as well. Like I feel, I feel like I have a pieces of myself in all of them. And so he really asked very um, hard questions, you know, uh, of, of why characters did the things that they did. Um, and so he 
for the most part, he respected like the rest of the script. He just, his, um, I think his major contributions to the story were to bring out more of Mimo, like in the beginning. Um, and then also um, the moment when uh, Mimo and um, her brother were looking at that volcano. It, it was a mo it was originally a moment between Mimo and Paolo. So instead of making it more of just like a girl who's, you know, in love with a boy, it became about family too. It became like a moment of like siblings going through the figuring out, you know, the changes in their lives together and looking into the future and what's ahead. So I thought it was beautiful um, that that choice that he did. And then for the, for the other parts of it, um, yeah, we heavily collaborated uh, with our DP and our editor as well. Um, and it was, for the most part, it was a very, yeah, it was a great collaboration. Um, yeah. Yeah, not a lot of butting heads, um, a lot of laughing really and not taking things too seriously, um, which is kind of the vibe of the film anyway. So, so he was just, yeah, he was just generous and very open to, <laughs> to trying things out and stuff. So. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I don't think you could ask for a better uh, relationship with a director on your first project, um, with, especially with something that is so close to your heart in so many ways. Yeah. Um, so, you know, on that note, uh, Besides Raya, obviously um, your cast, um, Paolo and Mimo and the, the whole crew are just absolutely brilliant. Um, are they sort of known um, actors or up and coming in the Philippines? How did you find um, these young actors to play these roles? We have a hodgepodge of actors because some of them are... Um, like Shiara, the pretty girl, the popular girl, she's in soaps and she's very, uh, she's popular in the Philippines. And then um, as her character is. <laughs> and then Noel is kind of like an indie darling that has done um, some other indie films uh, when he was much younger. And then um, Mima was a non-actor and um, a very last minute choice. Um, and then Gilligan and Kachi are both, oh, Gilligan's a, that was his first feature ever. And then Kachi was a theater actor and um, did a lot of theater. And um, so it's a mixed bag of, of, of experience and yeah, and wow. styles. But they all, um, I mean, they're all fantastic. You would never know that um, there was that different differential level of experience, but I'm sure as a group, they supported each other and helped each other through the process. Yeah, they became for real friends. Um, Raya made sure that they uh, did a uh, working, um, an acting workshop together. Mm -hmm. And he, I think in that, I wasn't part of that workshop, but I think in that moment, they were just told to shed all of the things that they were taught and just be as authentic as possible and kind of just be themselves as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And so that really helped. And then, you know, they all also became friends because um, when the camera is not rolling, they're all huddled together in the, you know, in the tent or playing off somewhere. And um, they really bonded. So um yeah i think the the chemistry that you saw on the screen um about with their friendship is it's a real it's a real chemistry do you know if they keep in touch they do actually um it's super funny because i saw um you know on social media that noel has he started kind of like this talk show um you know like a like a weekly show and then he would like ask them to be on his guest on his show so it's super cute yeah it's really cool and then you know you see them you know commenting on each other's posts and stuff like that um i believe after the film wrapped they all like went to watch a movie this is pre-covid so um yeah yeah oh very cool very cool so i guess um you know my sort of wrap-up question about um production and the completion of the film um 
you know, now that um, the process has been completed, um, you know, what um, what is your feeling on, uh, you know, the final product in terms of bringing like the script that you originally imagined in your head and the, the final film that we have now? Um, is that what is your experience now or what are your thoughts reflecting on that experience? It was, you know, for for a first like feature screenplay that, you know, didn't have a lot of um didn't have like big companies behind it or anything like that. I mean, ABS-CBN in the Philippines is, is a pretty big bro broadcasting network that came on later. Um, but as far as just like our, our crew and our, our scrappy little crew, um, yeah, it feels really good to watch something that, you know, it just comes from a very genuine place. So I think if, if, and perhaps because I am also the producer that um, I was precious, I mean, not too precious, but I was pretty precious about the script. But I also knew as the producer that, okay, we have limited resources, but this is like, I'll give it my best effort. And this is, this is what it's going to come out to. And being pretty Im amazed by that, you know, because everyone who were open to helping help and um and it's it's just coming from this place of like you know it's it's i can't even describe it it's coming from a genuine place like a like wh when people say passion project i now know what that means because mm -hmm. um it's when when people agree to help me they're all because like you know i love the project i love the people you know um it, it's always coming from that place. Um, and we weren't, were not um, pressured by, oh, this needs to make X amount of dollars or pesos in the box office. Like there, there's not that kind of pressure. So we just wanted to tell a story that's like very, you know, and, and you know, probably for me as, as a Filipino American, um, maybe it's, um, wanting to just craving to to make something that shows um you know where i'm from and and for other asian americans to to be to be seen more on, on screen on the screen mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's yeah it's i think it's fulfilling in in those levels of, of here we are we started with with a screenplay and and um i would say maybe three or four years later you know, here we are and we have a film and I can honestly say that we're proud of it and we touch people, you know, if I get a message or an email about someone, you know, a stranger who's seen it, who's seen it, who's touched by it. And then that, that is the cherry on top of my day right there. So, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, that's such wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm sure there's a bit of, it's a bit surreal, uh, I imagine too. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. I mean, um, I mean, you're in Berlin, right? Yeah. I was. I mean, forget about me. My actors, you know, that like Mimo, that was her first time out of the country, and she had to go to Germany, and all of a sudden she was like, in this table, um, giving out autographs to like German kids, and she's just like, my life has turned upside down. You know, it's like an incredible experience for them. And I think, like, if, if films can, can change, you know, a couple of different um, perspectives or, you know, touch people's lives in, in small and big ways, then, man, like, I'm in this. Like, this is a great way to live, you know. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'll stop there. <laughs> no, 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 very cool. I love that, um, that you know, you were able to have that experience in that Berlin premiere right before, um, you know, everything sort of got shut down so that you yeah. still got that, you know, theatrical experience. You know, build, building on um, what you were just talking about, I, and sort of my like last question is that, you know, I know that you, besides obviously Death of Nintendo, you've been very busy with uh, a lot of different projects. Um, and that includes, you know, your work for Film Independent um, and also uh, your company Indie Flip that uh, is 
uh, created to make films on underrepresented communities and subjects with cross-cultural themes, as I read, um, which is amazing. I, I love I love that mission. Um, so I wanted to find out a little bit more about about Indie Flip and about you know what's next for you and what your what your plans are for the future. Sure. So yeah, I think working at Film Independent aligns with my personal mission because their mission is also to lift up, you know, diverse and innovative voices. And it's very much my <laughs> mandate too. So I'm not only am I continuing continuously meeting um, or being exposed to kind of the, the players in the industry that can make kind of this decisions to, to shift, um, the way that we are doing things in Hollywood, mm -hmm. but also, yeah, like championing, you know, I'm reviewing um, applicants for all the development labs and, mm -hmm. you know, really, really championing those who deserve to, to be given a chance. Um, and I think that's, yeah, it's such a fulfilling um, thing to do. Um, it's like my way of giving back, not that I'm done making films but you know it's just a wonderful way to partner my intentions of, of i'm gonna while i'm writing the next thing i'm working you know to, to also help um sustain myself um and and help others so very much like in grad school that i helped my colleagues and my classmates make their film it's very much the same kind of idea that now i'm working but i'm also helping other people um, you know, um, suggesting them to, to, you know, companies like CNN or Netflix or, mm -hmm. you know, um, and support these filmmakers. They're, you know, um, they have amazing experiences and creative visions. Um, so yeah. And then, yeah, I'm just right. I'm just writing again because of COVID. Uh, there's, if, if there's time left in my day, I would, continue to write because who else is, you know, we need as many people as we can to write stories about uh, people who, who look like us or who look like me for, for I mean, for my, for my own purpose. Um, so yeah, just doing the, the daily, the daily grind, I guess, yeah. fighting the daily fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I hope that you, um, you know, keep writing, keep writing. And uh, of course it is a, you know, if you can't do anything else during COVID, it's great. <laughs> it's a great opportunity. Um, but, you know, we're, I really look forward to seeing your next project. Um, and I, I love the work that you're doing with Film Independent because you are supporting other filmmakers um, and supporting others and those underrepresented voices that I think is so important. Um, I think the industry is at a, a, a big point of change right now. Um, and uh, opening up a lot to diverse voices and underrepresented voices that haven't been, uh, have been unfortunately sidelined in the past. And so I think there's a lot of um, excitement and a lot of wonderful content um, and uh, to, to come. So uh, thank you for your work uh, in that area and also for this beautiful film. Um, so I think, you know, as far as our Q&A today, uh, that, is, that is all the questions that I have. Is there anything else that you would like to add um, to our audience before we go? Oh, I would just say that, I guess, uh, for, for the 2020 of it all and the whole, you know, uncertainty of it all, um, yeah, just hang in there. Uh, if you're having days where you're not feeling great, that's fine. I would say use, um, continue to use writing or watching films as a, an escape or as a creative outlet to pour in those those emotions that you're you can't quite express. Just like Mimo and <laughs> me, um, yeah, continue to find a refuge in the arts. Mm. Yeah, thank you so much, Valerie. I love that sentiment to leave on. Uh, thank you all so much for being with us today again and a big, big mahalo to Valerie Castillo Martinez. Um, I thank you all to all of our sponsors, our members, our board of directors who helped make HIF happen and another huge mahalo to the Vilcek Foundation um, for their support of this program. Thank you all. And if you for some reason have not watched Death of Nintendo yet, please watch the film immediately and check out some of the other New American Perspectives films in the program. Thank you. Aloha. 
Thank you.